Greetings, Israel, Judah. This is your brother, DFG, Gideon's Flight. Hey, my brothers, I think, sisters, I think we're finally at the end. I guess I have to call this a series now, uh, part three of our Bible story message about what actually happened in Sodom, Gomorrah, and all of the cities that were confederate uh, with them. And I will tell you, brothers and sisters, um, I've been blessed, you know, and in, in not only being able to, to share this with my brothers and sisters, but also to, to really be able to look deeper inside, you know, of, of these teachings. I'm talking about in, well, all of the teachings, praise Yahuwah. But these particular teachings in, in regards to Sodom and Gomorrah, I mean, we were all familiar with the city, if you were, if you were in Christianity in, in any of its many um, tentacles, <laughs> you probably were familiar with uh, Sodom and Gomorrah and, you know, the uh, most high, you know, raining fire on, on that city. And for the most part, you know, we learned that in the book of Genesis. And, and Genesis kind of emphasized, you know, one aspect of it. And you really have to kind of really even dig deep to understand that aspect. And that was, you know, the homosexual component to it. I mean, so, you know, you would hear people preaching against homosexuality and say, you know, remember what the Most High did to Sodom and Gomorrah. So, you know, if you're, if you're homosexual and you're doing this, Yah's going to burn you with fire. Now, although that, that, that aligns up with what we know our book says in the Torah in regards to, you know, um, inappropriate uh, sexual relationships and uh, uh, sexual um, interactions. But again, we have to always ask and pray and be open to Abba Yah, you know, pushing us a little bit farther. And, and, the great thing about it is that he promised that he would in these last days. And just as we were taught, you know, the one aspect of inappropriate relationships in Sodom and Gomorrah, we weren't taught about the other aspects, pedophiles, intermarrying with heathens, um, wife swapping. See, we weren't taught that because I truly believe that the heathens are the seed of Satan intended to keep that hidden Forever, because if they kept those other things hidden, it, you know, it's kind of like, okay, we're going we're gonna to just throw, you know, one of them out there. We're going to give them a sacrificial lamb, right? So the homosexual became the sacrificial lambs so that all the other abominations could survive. I'm going to say that again. It appears that the homosexuals became the sacrificial lambs so the rest of the abominations could survive. In essence, our people would still be, you know, in, in, in behaviors that would be considered evil and wicked, wicked before our Abba Yah, but they would never know it because no one would teach it. And they, in the books that would uncover it, they would be hid from the people. And then later on tell the people, well, these books were not sanctioned by the Holy Spirit, whatever that means. Yeah, somehow this 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 Holy Spirit came to these Romans, <laughs> these, these 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 pagans, and and gave them a revelation about what Israel shouldn't be looking at any longer. Because that's really the long and the short of it. If you really wanted a shorter version of what happened in 325 A.D., I just shared it with you. And unfortunately, it, it was it was pushed and promoted and taught, and to the most part, you know, many of of of, of the Hebrew preachers were incentivized and, and, and rewarded for teaching it and preaching it and really governed, you know, they would send, you know, white pastors into the, onto, onto these plantations or, or these, these sharecropping fields or cities, wherever there were so-called Christian churches. And they would, they would sit in, 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 you know, right, you know, behind the pulpit, you know, as though they were the guest preacher or the guest bishop or whatever role they were playing to make sure that he was preaching Exactly what it is they needed him to preach to keep Abba Yah's people in the darkness. And we never knew it. We oh, well, that's just a, that's just the surrounding bishop. That's just the regional bishop, or that's just the regional whomever, whomever, whomever. Never realizing he was just nothing but an agent there. Make sure that, you know, his agent, the so-called preacher, 
male and female, were teaching only what they were told to teach to Israel and nothing more. And for the most part, that's what was pushed down, you know, generation after generation to after generation to now we're in total darkness. Or well, up until now, we were in total darkness. But now by the by, by, by the mercy and by the grace of, of Abba Yah, he's revealing this truth to us. And now we're beginning to see these books. And these books are starting to open themselves up to Israel. At least those of Israel who want the truth. There's still many of our people, they don't want the truth. They have never wanted the truth. They just want religion. They just they just need something to occupy their time on Sunday mornings or Sunday night or Wednesday night, whatever they do. But they're not hungry for Yah's truth because when you bring forth Yah's truth to many of Israel, they reject it. They just flat out say, I don't want to hear that. I don't agree with that. You know, that's not sanctioned the Holy Spirit. And you ask them, what Holy Spirit are you talking about? Where did you get that information from? Well, that's what they said. In Were you there in 325 A.D.? Of course, none of us were there, 325 A.D. But then they'll tell you these books were canonized and these books were unsanctioned books. But yet you can get a 1611 King James Bible and these same books that they claim or were taught and now push back on us saying that these, those books were not sanctioned. And yet those apocryphal books are sitting right there in the, in, the, in the 1600 King James Version of the Bible. Not that I'm promoting King James Bible, I'm just simply stating it's still in their book. Almost 1,300 years after they said it was taken out, it was still in those in, in the King James Bible. And when you ask them to explain that, they just, but at that point, they're just, you know, they're just like, I don't want to hear nothing you have to say. But at that point, they have cut us off. They have, they have, they have just, just, their, their brains have just gone totally silent. Because they are in rebellion and they don't even know it. They really think, oh, no, I'm going to hold on to this. I'm going to hold on to this. I know it's going to cause me, you know, this weight is causing me to go underwater and I'm going to, but I'm not cutting this loose because that's, it was on me when they threw me in the water. So it must supposed to be on me and I guess I'll drown. That's how they sound to, to, to many women like ourselves. Like, why wouldn't you want to know the total truth? Why would you be afraid to, to learn something that was hidden from you? It's really stolen from you, whitewashed. You know, First Maccabees 3 and 48 talks about how they painted the heathens, painted the image of themselves and put it in our Torah. Hiding us from us. Through their cleverness, through their wickedness, because they knew that for us to wake up, means that they would have to be, you know, for lack of a better word, put to death. And unfortunately, many of our people are still aligned with them. And while I'm thinking about it, you know, I'm going to say this, and, and maybe I'm being petty. So let me let me qualify myself right now, brother. So maybe I'm being petty. But you see this picture right here? This brother, this is, this, you see here, this is not three men. Now, <laughs> I know most of y'all saying, okay, DFG, of course we know that's not three men. That's one man, you know, doing obelence, going up and down, praying. He's got his face in the book. You can see the same color of the book. You see the light shining there. And he's not naked because if you look up here, you can see the garment all the way up on his shoulder. But yeah, there will be scoffers out there because I brought up the truth yesterday about one's nakedness not being revealed and was told this is idolatrous and this is naked and you shouldn't be teaching because you're not qualified to teach. Okay, again, I know I'm being petty, but for the ignorant who would say something so asinine, he is covered. That's just an arm and a, and a shoulder. 
He is in the book. He's not practicing idolatry. He's just studying. And last but not the least, he's not in front of a whole bunch of people. He's in an isolated space. And it's just a portrait. And some of us believe it's an inspiring portrait to men. The same men that some of the female scoffers are attacking for not being honorable men, strong men, men of faith. That's why they're no good men. Well, here's a perfect example of what we would want our men to be doing. It's what I do. It's surely what I'd love for my sons to be doing. But even that is not good enough. So unto you, this is what we say to you. You probably you need to repent. You are lost as the day can as the sun is bright. And the darkness that you're in is a great, great darkness. And if you don't repent for your wickedness, because it's not about this portrait, it's about what's in your heart. And you don't want to deal with in your heart. So you spew out your, 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 your vomit upon the men and women of Abba Yah. Because you can't deal with the wickedness and the sin that's in your life. And we pity you. We pity you. And these books are written to expose people like you. Because see, when the truth comes out, you get angry and you get hostile and you go on the attack. And there lies your own personal judgment. We don't judge you. The book is judging you. That's why you got heated. That's why you got lathered up. And you probably got fascinated and everything else too. So I get yeah, your brain's probably a little scrambled. But still no excuse. Last, I'll say to any of you, male or female, who fall into that category of scoffers, repent. Because the kingdom of Elohim is soon to come. And that same fire that's going to take out the rest of these heathens is going to take you out right along with them, if you don't. End of petty. <laughs> All right. Let's go back to the word. So we're going to pick up, and y'all willing, <laughs> hallelujah, we're going to finish up part three of what now it almost looks like a series from last Wednesday's Bible study. And again, we invite you to come and sit in with us. Again, you you can be as quiet as a church mouth, piano, cotton as they say. You don't have to say anything. But if you just want to be a part of, 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 of teaching, learning, inspiration, assembling, then you're invited to come with us. And y'all willing, we'll be there Wednesday and we'll be in the book. Learning, growing, and fellowshipping. 45 minutes. We're not here to recruit anybody. We're not here to tell you what to believe or not to believe. We're just saying, hey, well, what you know, what's wrong with learning more? You know, our, our prophet, you know, and the angel, Michael, said that in the last days our knowledge would be increased. So if he was talking to you, then, again, we have made space for your knowledge to be increased. And so you're invited. All we ask is you come with an open heart to listen. And if you have something to share with us, share with integrity. And we ask that you keep it in, line, in alignment with what is being taught on that particular study. That's all that's required. Wednesday nights, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. So if you live in Mountain Time, that's 5 o'clock. If you live in Pacific Time, that will be 4 o'clock. If you're in Central Time, that'll be 6 o'clock. One of my sons told me that I might want to clarify that. So just because I think some of our people are, you know, they're looking at, they think it's 7 o'clock, but they don't realize they're in Central Time. So if you get on 7 o'clock Central Time, you're going to miss us. We'll be gone. <laughs> I praise God. All right. So we're going to pick up where we left off on yesterday teaching. All right. We're in the book of Jasher, chapter 19. And now we're at verse 23. And if you want to know what happened before, of course, look at the other videos. If I try to review it, we'd be at series eight. <laughs> I 
Hallelujah. Before we're done. Verse 23. And the kings of Elam had made war with the kings of Solomon. Now these are just like Russia fighting with Ukraine and Ukraine fighting, you know, uh, uh, what is that? Turkey fighting with, you know, Syria. It's just heathens fighting heathens. And the kings of Elam captured all the property of, Se of Sedom, Sodom. And they took Lot captive with his property. And when he was told to Abraham, he went and made war with the kings of Elam. And he recovered from their hands all the property of Lot as well as the property of Sedom, Sodom. And again, you know, it just shows you, my brothers and sisters, those of you who are concerned about what's coming, whether it be aliens or whatever it is, Elohim is always going to send. When, when, remember when Daniel was locked up? We studied that, you know, in building the dragon. He sent Habakkuk to Daniel. Amen? When, I, when, 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 when uh, Elijah was on the run from Jezebel out in the wilderness, he sent, you know, birds and, you know, and other means, to, you know, a provision for him. Abba Yah is not going to forsake you if your heart is right before him. And, and just like he did not forsake Lot, he sent Abraham because Abraham's heart was right before Abba Yah. Abraham obeyed the Torah. He kept the Torah. And he was honorable. He did not let himself get caught up in religion. We saw that when he destroyed the idols that were in his father's house. And Yah would, matter of fact, Yah would hearken to the voice of Abraham. He said that Abraham was considered his friend. So on behalf of Abraham, Abba Yah interceded for Lot, really for Sodom. And again, so I remind you, my brothers and sisters, that, you know, no weapon formed against you is going to prosper if, if you stay aligned with the truth. As long as you're not out here chasing behind these heathens and their customs and their laws, you're good. And don't forget that. That's why, you know, we stay Torah, 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 Tanakh, Torah, Pachava, Torah, Torah, Torah. And we stay away from other doctrines that, that, that can cause confusion and conflict with the truth. You know, you know, y'all put in my heart, he said, you don't have to go find the heathen's book to justify the book. Most of their books are falsified and, 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 and lies anyway. Abba Yah is not giving them revelation about his truth. Why would he tell Satan what he's doing? Or Satan's seed. Whatever they say, you can always believe there's going to be a little lie tied into it. Always to kind of throw you off track. The book is a book. The book is the book. I don't, I pray that Abba Yah never have me have to go outside of his Tanakh to validate his word. Like so many others out here are supposed to be teaching the truth. They've got to go out there and quote out of some heathen book. We don't need to do that if you're in the truth. Yah will reveal it to you where, where you could, in a manner that you can teach it to his sons and daughters that they will understand without the heathen's help. But anyway, so Abraham goes and he rescues his nephew. Verse 24. And at that time, the woman of Lot bore him a daughter. That's Adu, his wife. And he called her name Paltit saying, because Elohim had delivered him and his whole household from the kings of Elam, and Paltit, the daughter of Lot, grew up, and one of the men of Sodom took her for a woman. That's her first mistake. And let me tell it, Lot's first mistake as well. Because whereas Abraham was keeping the Torah, apparently Lot had compromised himself, because he should have known not to have his daughter marry a heathen. When Abraham wanted to find a wife for his son, what did he do? He sent Eliezer to Rebekah's family to find, you know, a, a, I mean, to, 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 he sent Eliezer, yeah, to, to, his, to his blood family to find Rebekah, to relatives. And Isaac, the same thing. When he wanted to find a wife for Jacob, he turned him over to his sister's brother's household. Because they all understood that we were not to intermarry with the heathens. It's in as much as abomination as it is for a man to be sleeping with a man. Back to where I started this, what I said earlier. You know, we they have they threw us off by having us focus on homosexuality. 
so that they can slip in all these other layers of abominable behavior and we wouldn't be paying attention to it. You heard me talk about extortion. You heard me talk about pedophilia. You heard me talk about wife swapping. You heard me talk about adultery. You heard me talk about intermarriage. You even heard me talk about aborting babies. In other words, passing our babies through the fire. All equally abominable under Abba Yah's laws and Torah. Law, Torah. All equally abominable. So if you're in, if you're if you have embraced any of those lifestyles or you're a part of any of that, including aborting your babies, you're just as abominable. Your actions, your behavior, in your life is as abominable as a man laying with a man. And that is this. That is without question, according to the Torah. If you're following this channel, that has been taught many, many, many times. If you were really in the Torah, as many of our people confessed, you would already know that. <clears throat> you would know it already. But again, there's a way that seemed right. In other words, when, when, whenever someone wants to do something evil or something that, that, that they want to do that doesn't line up with the Torah, which is, I'm sure, why we got attacked about that, because we must have hit a sore spot with that particular person. Probably has something to do with it. They probably will go around half-dressed herself, and that's probably why she got upset. Or then maybe... She, you know, there's some other abominable things that's in her life that she couldn't deal with. So she just falsely accused the brother. Although I gave it right from the book. I didn't give my personal opinion. I gave Yah's word. My personal opinion means nothing. But Yah's word, it is going to come back and it's going to perform everything it said. So whether you want to embrace it or, or deny it or marginalize it or compartmentalize it, it's up to you. But one thing you can be assured of, you will be judged by all of us will. And if he says that an abominable act is an abominable act, and if he said to come out, you had better get out. You had better repent. If you care about where you're going to spend eternity. Now, if you don't care where you're going to spend eternity, then, then continue that way. I mean, what else is there to say? But that was mistake number one. He should have he should have followed the Torah and, and knew that according to again Tobit four and twelve, Deuteronomy seven and two and three, Jubilees. But it's all through the book that you were not supposed to intermarry with the heathens. But he chose to stand stand back and let it happen. Now watch how this works out. Let's continue on. Verse 25. And a poor man came into the city to seek maintenance, and he remained in the city some days. And all the people of Sodom caused a proclamation of their custom not to give this man a morsel of bread to eat until he dropped dead upon the earth, and he did so. Now, this is their laws. And that's why you heard your brother say, and that's why the title of this message is, just because it's legal does not make it right, does not make it just. We're, we don't have to obey the laws of the heathens when those laws conflict with Abba Yah's laws. Yet, they have taken and misquoted things, for example, in the book of Hebrews, chapter 13. I think it's where it writes over there, talking about, you know, obey those who have charge over you. But they never tell you that that's Hebrews. Hebrews, meaning Israelites, which is not contradicting where it says for us not to put a stranger above us. But they've hired agents, field agents, to come out here and teach that as though that means something other. means you just got to follow the laws of the land. No, that was talking to the Hebrews, which simply means they went right back into the Torah, where the Torah says you do not put a stranger, or sh thou shall not have a stranger to rule over you. Thou shall not have a king to lead you. It should be of your own brothers. Exclusively, I might add. But because it was taught incorrectly, and these books were not uh, uh, available to us, or if they were, we didn't know they were, it led our people into abominable behaviors. And Yah said in these last days, I'm going to cry, I'm going to call out to my people one last time. I'm going to show grace and mercy to my people one last time. 
And this is that time. And you accept it, praise Yahuwah for you. If you reject it, you know, then shame on you. What else can we say? But this law said that they let a man starve to death and all the people in the city were okay with it. Just like many of the people, if you ask them right now how they feel about gay marriage, how they feel about pro charge they all say, well, you know, hey, it's the law. Wickedness. Wicked behavior, wicked attitude. Just like it was in Sodom and Gomorrah and why they were judged so harshly by Abba Yah and why these nations, including this one that we live in, if you're in America, is going to be judged as harsh. Using the justification where it's the law. Well, if it's, a, if it's a wicked or unjust law, you should speak out against it and you surely shouldn't be a part of it, brothers and sisters. But let, let's continue here. Verse 26. In, in politics, the daughter of Lot saw this man lying in the street, starved with hunger, and no one would give him anything to keep him alive. And he was and, and he was just upon the point of death. And her soul was filled with pity on the account of the man. And she fed him secretly with bread for many days, and the soul of this man was revived. But when she went to forth to fetch water, she put the bread in the water pitcher. And when she came to the place where the poor man was, she took the bread from the pitcher and gave it to him to eat. So did she many days. Now this would I'll, I'll, I'll give a lot of credit for one thing. It appears that he taught her about charity. Because she did act in the mind of charity. And that's, and that's a good thing. But you can't mix clean with unclean. Because he married her all to a heathen. When he should have stood up against that. And obviously he taught her about love and honor. And, and, and caring about other people. Well she's demonstrating that. But again, it's why we're warned, do not mix holy with unholy. Do not mix clean with unclean because it's never going to work out in the end. And you're going to cause yourself to be ostracized, brothers and sisters. You're going to cause yourself to come to have much sorrow, sorrow that you would not have never had to experience had you stayed true to the law, statutes, and commandments. Had we stayed true to the Torah, some of the sorrow that some of our people are going through right now because you have compromised yourself. Your heart is good, but you're still living, living in uncleanliness. And whatever your fear is to come out of, you have to overcome that fear. If you're, if you're practicing or participating in an, an unnatural sexual behaviors, you have to come out of that. You can't just sit over there and just say, y'all have mercy on me. His mercy is his Torah. His salvation is written in his Torah. His redeeming powers are stated what is necessary in his Torah for you. Why die in your sins? We're all going to die, but you're going to die in your sins. And oh, we're all going to get rid of these earthly bodies. And y'all just saying, I gave you something beautiful. But it was for you to, 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 to protect that beautiful thing. Man and, male and female, I might add. Our brothers are beautiful. We use the word handsome. But in our natural selves, our brothers are beautiful. Our, the daughters of Zion. And their natural you know, selves are beautiful. But the heathen has told them that they have to adorn themselves and, 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 and make these, these Images of themselves to look like they're not, they're no longer their natural self, and then they're, therefore they're validated. Their beauty is validated. Your beauty starts on the inside, my brother. Your beauty is on the inside, my sister. And if that beauty is on the inside of you, it's going to show itself on the outside. It's impossible for it not to. But if you take a, 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 a sheep and you throw it in the mud as, 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 you know, I know we know a sheet in its natural color is not, you know, the color white. But if you take it in its natural color and you throw it in the mud, it's going to start looking like the mud before long. And after a while, you know, it's just going to be another dirty beast. 
Let your adorning be the adorning of obedience, my brothers and sisters. There's nothing more brilliant in color than that. There's nothing more that's nothing more that more that's more elegant than that. There's nothing more beautiful in the presence of Abba Yah than a man with his word in the book, his face in the book. Hallelujah. I guess that's the reason why I can't get through these messages because that voice, you know, that other voice that's talking to me as I'm sharing with you, my brothers and sisters, you know, it's talking to you and it won't let me do it. It won't let me stay the course because it's talking to us. That's the love of Abba Yah for us. Let's continue on. So she had a good heart. But it, her heart was in conflict with the laws of the land. Verse 29. And the people of Sodom and of, of, of Gomorrah wondered how this man could bear starvation for so many days. And they said to each other, this can only be that he eats and drinks. And for no man can bear starvation for so many days and live as this man has without even his countenance changing. And, and then three men concealed themselves in a, place with, in a place where the poor man was stationed to know who it was that brought him bread to eat. Remember again, these are the scoffers, brothers and sisters. They lay right there in the bushes looking for a way to unjustly attack the good that we do. And what's really sad about it Israel scoffers many times don't even realize they're scoffers, skeptics, being used. They really think they're doing a service to others. How can you be doing a service for others when you're attacking those who are teaching Abba Yah's word as it is written in the book? But again, our enemy is right there present and he is listening in on everything. But we know it. But unfortunately, this daughter of Zion, she didn't know it because she had been compromised. And how was her compromised? Because of the fact that her husband wasn't teaching her, hey, you can't do that. There are heathens out here. But again, if he was a heathen too, why would he warn her against his own kind? Think about it. And now she's out there doing good with no covering. And Paul to the daughter of Lot went forth that day to fetch water and she put bread in her pitcher of water and she went to draw water by the poor man's place and she took out the bread from the pitcher and she gave it to the poor man and he ate it. And the three men saw what Paul to, did to the poor man and they said to her, it is you then who has supported him, and therefore he has not starved, nor changed in his appearance, nor died like the rest. See the mindset of the heathen? Still kill and destroy. That's the innate nature. Here it is, they can't stand the truth being taught. Even now, they can't stand righteousness prevailing. It's not in them. And when we allow ourselves to, 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 to break bread with them, in other words, to interact or to become one with them, then we become corrupted by them. And again, it's why Moses they said, don't give your daughters to them because they will, they will turn your daughters against Abba Yah. Your sons, they will turn your sons against Abba Yah. Now, I know many, oh, no, they won't. If, if your word is greater than Abba Yah's word, then, then you're right. But if it isn't, then you're wrong. If he said that's what's going to happen, that's what's going to happen. And we should know that. If you're an Israelite brother or sister, you should know that your word does not supplant Abba Yah's word. You should know that already. We, don't have, we shouldn't have to drill this in, into, into your stubbornness. And in verse 33, and the three men went out of the place which they were concealed, and they, and they arrested Palta, and the bread which she had in the port, and, and 
the bread which was in the poor man's hand. And they, they even took the bread back. They're wicked. And they took Palta and brought her before the judges. And they said to them, this did she do. And it is she who supplied the poor man with bread. Therefore did he not die all this time. And now, therefore, declare unto us the punishment due to this woman for having trespassed our laws. And that's why I've said to my brothers and sisters many times before, we, Abba Yah, does not honor heathen laws. I've heard people say, well, I'm honoring this because I made this decision, you know, and before I knew better. And I'm honoring it because Yah says that, you know, I have to keep any law that I make. I, I'm, I, I'm, a, I'm obliged to any covenant that I made. That is, that Where? Where is that written? That we are obligated to keep the heathen's laws. Where is that written? Unless you're over there in the New Testament and where they constorted the word, then where is it in the Tanakh that tells us that we are to keep the heathen? We're being judged for keeping the heathen laws. I'm talking about harsh judgment. Y'all is not the author of confusion. Where does it state that, that, that we keep the heathens' covenants and laws above Abba Yah's laws? If Abba Yah says it's wrong, then the, the, there's a word that he gave all of us to remind us. It's called repent. Repent means a turning away or a coming out or a separation. It doesn't mean repent and then stay in sin. Us, us in rebellion or whatever word you call honoring your your, your 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 covenant to the heathen. The heathen don't even honor their own covenants. And I think we if you're an Israelite in America and you don't know that then you <laughs> Okay. <clears throat> I'll let it go. If you don't know that by now, then don't be surprised that one day that, you know, if somebody find you swinging, like what is Billy Holiday, Strange Fruit? You don't know what that's all about. Go back and listen to Billy Holiday talking about the Strange Fruit song. You're going to become Strange Fruit. Because that's what she became. Strange Fruit. Paulton -pa became Strange Fruit. Let me, let me. Go a little farther so you can understand what I'm saying here. If you don't already, I suspect many of you do. But this woman has transgressed our law, verse 35. And the people of Sodom assembled and kindled a fire in the street of the city. And they took the woman and cast her into the fire and she was burned to ashes. Now, brothers and sisters, if you know anything about the history of the heathens towards Israel, the so-called Negro, black man, colored man. One of the things they were known for were hanging us and burning us. Nothing new under the sun. And what's really sad, when you see this, it's, I'm going to read 35 to you again. And sisters, listen up here. Brothers, you too. And the people of Sodom and Amara assembled and kindled a fire in the street of the city. This means all the people. They were having their picnic, all standing around, looking, celebrating, smiling, laughing, drinking. Go back and look at the movie Rosewood if you want to see a, a, a current example. That happened in 1921, if my memory serves me correctly. And see what happened to Israelites in Rosewood, Florida. And what you're going to see is the very same thing that happened in Sodom and Gomorrah, right here in America, in the state of Florida, in the city of Rosewood, or the town of Rosewood. The exact same thing, hanging and burnings of our people by the heathens. Heathens who were supposed to be friendly to our people, all centered on lies. But no mercy. No one came to the rescue of the people because they were in violation of our Torah. Because they were in a Christian church over there listening to a wicked old Christian preacher. Now, the name that was, what, A-M-E was the church. Go look. If, if, if their so-called Messiah or Savior was so powerful, then why didn't he come and rescue those people? 
except they would be an abomination. I'll be Abba Yah say when we obey him, we're gonna be blessed, not cursed. So obviously, you know, we were we were we were in a in a in a transgressing way, or we were in transgression, because Yah would have not allowed them to do it to us. We've seen Yah's hand come in and intercede on us when we're right. And we also seen why, why Abba Yah's hand you take and move removed from us when we're wrong. In other words, when we're in abomination or rebellion or stubbornness. And they burned this woman to ashes, and her heathen husband was nowhere to be found. He probably in, inside shaking in his boots. Or thinking about who his next wife was going to be. Who's to say? But I know one where he wasn't right standing with her. I don't hear say that he got out in front of her and he fought and they killed him and then they took his wife. I don't read that in here. But some of the daughters of Zion are still over there with the heathen thinking that somehow or another, oh, he really loved me. Yeah, but he ain't, his foot ain't been put to no fire. And if he really loved you, he would keep the Torah anyway. If you were afraid to put him away, he'd put you away. If you, again, anything that's in the bottom of the way, if, you're in a, if, a, if a man is with a man and he isn't supposed to be, then a righteous man, even if he's one of the two, would put the other one away. Say, no, we can't, I ain't doing this no longer. This is wrong. I didn't think this was wrong. According to the book, I can't be with you. I'm sorry. If you don't want to leave, I'm leaving. That's what, that's what righteousness looks like. Not saying, well, let's just hang around and see what happens. Well, she burned. What do you think will happen to you? According to the book, you're going to burn too. Verse 36. In the city of Adma, there was a, in the city of Adma, there was a woman whom they did like. Show you that these demons, you know what I'm saying? They have no loyalty. These he he don't have any loyalty. He doesn't have loyalty to themselves and themselves only. And I'm not talking about even as a collective. They fight amongst each other. The game. They take a sense of pride when they, when they, when they, when they outfox the other one. They celebrate it when they win. They tear down cities when they win. <laughs> they burn down cities when they win. We've seen that in their sporting events. They riot when they win. And they riot when they're losing. So why would anyone want to, in their logical mind, want to, to build with a group of people that you can't trust? Win or lose, you, you, you know, they still have this, 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 this seed of destruction in them. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's go on. Verse 37, and a traveler came into the city of Adma. Now, Adma is one of, the, one of the sister cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, those that were in Confederate. We talked about that yesterday, the United States, you know what I'm saying, or uh, the, uh, the United Kingdom, or whatever United they call it, the United Immigrants, Immigrants, Heathens. For the traveler came into the city of Adma, to abide there all night with the intention of going home in the morning. And he sat, the op sat opposite the door of the house of the young woman's father to remain there as the sun had set when he had reached that place. And the young woman saw him sitting at the door of the house. Now, this is the guy that's just temporarily, you know, in this situation. He's not planning on staying. He's just passing through. But again, when our books say have no partakers of them, none. It means that. And he asked for and he asked her this this woman, this woman who had favor in the city. People liked her. And he asked her for a drink of water. And she said to him, Who are you? And he said to her, I was I was this day going on the road and, and reach here where the sun sets. So I will abide here all night, and in the morning I will rise early and continue on my journey. 
And the young woman went into the house and she fetched the man bread and water to eat and drink. And this affair became known to the people of Agma, and they assembled and brought the young woman before the judges that they should judge her for this act. And the judge said, the judgment of death must be passed upon this woman because she transgressed our law. Heathen laws, again. Now, if they're going to do this to somebody that they like, well, at the end of the day, let me, let me rephrase that. As you can see, it doesn't matter with them. They have no morals, brothers and sisters, is what we're saying. You cannot, heathens don't have a moral that they feel obliged to, obliged to obey. They do whatever comes to heart, whatever comes to mind. Their laws are predicated upon advantage for themselves and disadvantage to others. That's why Abba Yah refers to them as heathens. They have no principles, at least no core value. They have values. But their values are predicated on, 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 on self. And whatever, you know, you know what I'm saying, fits their mindset or whatever is pleasing to their flesh, that's what they're going to do. They'll be loyal to you in the morning and they'll, they'll by nightfall, hate you. Because they have no core value. They're like greedy dogs, never can have enough. No matter how much they have, they want more. That's why, again, he tells us to come out and be separated from these people. In other words, don't practice their customs, their behaviors, their laws. Does that mean that we go out here and, and, and we, we buy? It's, it's, be honest, here's the truth. Think about it from this, just, just for clarification, my brothers and sisters. Think about it this way. When we're obedient to the Torah, not only do we typically align ourselves with, with the moral law, we really almost, we become the example of what morality looks like when we are keeping the Torah. So we don't even have to fear violating their laws because when we're keeping the Torah, we are the supreme law. So when I say we don't obey the heathen laws, that don't mean we walk around and just do anything that comes to our imagination. That's what the heathens do. Go back and read the book of Judges. I want to say, as a matter of fact, let's go over there right quick. Have that in here? Yeah, look at look at Judges 20. This is how the heathens behave. This, this, this is their mindset. Judges chapter 21, verse 24. And the children of Israel departed thence at that time, every man to his tribe and his family, and they went out from thence, every man to his inheritance. See, Abu Yah has always told us to stay amongst our kind. Always. Never has he ever told us to, to, to break covenant with our kind. Ever. That's what heathens lie, telling us to mix in with the heathens. So why? They can kill the seed. Or stop a mother from having seed. Some of our women are no longer, you know, they got with the heathen. And now they, they have become unproductive for, for decades. And they think that's just. That ain't just. You don't know what y'all would have had you to be doing had you not been with a heathen. And the same thing with these men who are practicing this alternate lifestyle, homosexuality. Well, you should have been out there reproducing. But you got caught up in a triangle of death. Your seed died in filth, I might add, unfortunately. Theses. This ain't for children. So if you had your child here, then okay, you must have assumed the child was ready for this, and that's okay too. There's your call on that. But planting that seeds in death, cesspool. Because that's what your butt is, is made for. Verse 25 In those days there was no king in Israel, and every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Again, chaos. And that's what happened when they removed. The, 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 the truth from us, they hid these books, then it allowed us to do what's right in our own eyes, and it gave us a Jesus character to say, well, he died for your sins anyway, so it's no big deal. You see the deception there, my brothers and sisters? And this is why your brother speaks against that. Because it creates an environment for us all to have self-righteousness. 
He knows my heart. And all kind of other sayings that we, we pick up over a course of time. And now these sayings just add to our own demise. No, we don't obey the heathen laws. Our laws are superior to their laws. They made their laws, quite frankly, off of our laws. But of course, they corrupted them because they made them self-serving. Because that's what they do. They will stop you from being everything Abba Yah would have you to be. Because they can be what they want to be by having you in submission. Male or female. And some of our people don't understand this because they're like, like Lot's daughter. They, their heart's so big and so loving that they're blinded to, 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 to their own demise. And when you try to wake them up, they're still blind to it. The hell, they'd rather cut you off than to obey the truth. So let me unsubscribe and go on, find somebody else. Maybe they can tickle my, you know, my, 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 my desires. Well, just go find them. They will tickle your desires. But they're not going to put out that fire. No more than her husband came out and put that fire out when she was burning. I'm talking about Lot's daughter. He was nowhere to be found. For all the love that they shared with each other. When she needed him the most, there's nothing about him. And that's exactly how they're going to behave. That's how they have always behaved. They're your friend until it's no longer in their interest to be your friend. And if you don't believe that, try it and see what happens. Go against them. They'll be plotting and conniving, and before you know it, you know, you'll find something stinging in your back, and that'll be the knife that they put in it. I know they don't want to hear me say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Let's get on back to the book. Verse 40. And this affair became known to the people of Adma. And they assembled and they brought the young woman before the judges that she should be that they should judge her for this act. And the judge said, now all she did was gave this man water and bread, by the way, brothers and sisters, just to show you how heartless these heathens can be. That many of our people love so much. God is love. The judgment of death must be passed upon this woman because she transgressed our law. And this, therefore, is the decision concerning her. And the people of those cities, it wasn't just a few people. The cities, the nations, the countries, however you want to put it, all in agreement, all confederate, all united, assembled and brought out the young woman and poured Honey on her head to, on her from head to foot. And as the judge, the ones who they want to tell you obey those who have charge over you. The judge decreed that they placed her before a swarm of bees, which were then in their hives. And the bees flew upon her and they stung that her whole body was swelled. Swelled. And the young woman cried out on the counter of the bees, but no one took notice of her or, or no one took notice of her or pitied her. And she cried and her cries ascended unto heaven. She was stung to death and nobody came to her rescue. Her own people didn't come to her rescue. And see, for you few strangers out there who are still struggling whether or not you should come or stay with your kind. I'm telling you, they're going to turn on you too. I'm telling you, if you have a good heart. If your heart is pure and righteous, then you need to be willing to walk away from your kind and, and obey the Torah. Not to the degree that that's agreeable to Israelite. No, you obey the Torah as it is agreed to Abba Yah. Otherwise, you, you're wicked. You're just a wolf. You don't come to Israel and then violate the Torah because you're, somebody in Israel is telling you it's okay. No, you keep the Torah just as we have to keep it because they're not going to pity you either if you act kind towards Israel. You have to come all the way out or you'll be stung to death. Somebody got to say this stuff, brothers and sisters. And if it, if it falls upon me to say it, then I'll say it.
This perverseness has to stop. They hid these things. They hid their behaviors, their unjust laws. And again, they tried to pin it all on the homosexual in Genesis. When there were all kind of other wickedness going on in those cities. And nobody cared. Well, appears like they, everybody, they all stood around there and left this woman for doing what was righteous. I wonder if that soul, that man who was sojourning through there, I, I wonder if that was an Israelite. Now that's me. But it shows seemed they were real harsh on her for, for, for helping this man. Makes me believe he must have been an Israelite. But that's speculation on my part. I will admit that. Verse 44. And Yahuwah was provoked at this and all the works of the cities of Sodom. All the cities of. Again, we were taught like it was just one little city and just one little area. And why y'all blaming everybody else for just one what one person does? No, they were confederate. See that again, that's the deception of this whole thing. Well, you brother, you just looking at one situation. No, I'm talking about our Abba Yah says, if any of them agree with it, they all agree with it. Or otherwise, they would have already taken a stance against it, and they, that stance would be they would fight and they would they, they would they would resist and they will protest and they will do whatever they want to do, even if it ever whatever they needed to do, I'm sorry, even if it means to their death. And most of these people say nothing. When they say evil and wickedness, they find ways to justify. Well, he must have did something wrong. Why didn't he just stop? Why he ran? Why didn't he just humble himself? Why he didn't he just keep his mouth shut? You know, when they kill our sons, you know, with these vicious, you know, law enforcement demons. They always got an excuse for them. Well, again, they must have did something wrong. You know, you never know. You gotta wait. You gotta wait till all the truth come out, except it be them. Then the truth never comes out. Their behavior hasn't changed, and it's not going to change. They're the children of their fathers. The question is, will your behavior change? I'm talking about you, Israel. We're helping. We're here to help. The question is, do you want to help? Or you just want to do what you want to do? In other words, everybody did. Didn't we just read that? Everybody did whatever they felt was right. Regardless of what the word said. Just read it. Book of Judges 21. 23 and 24, 24 and 25. You heard it. You should be marking it. Back it up. You'll see where it is. Doing what's in your own heart because you think it's right does not make it right. Proverbs 14, 13. There's a way that seems right to a man or a woman. Woman, your way you think is right is going to lead you to destruction. You're going to burn. Same thing to you, brother. If it doesn't line up with the book. And I'm not saying this uh, to be harsh. I'm saying this, uh, quite frankly, this is what love sounds like. When it's genuine. People that love you will tell you. You know how to help yourself. They're not going to encourage you. To continue in the self-destructive behaviors. If they love you. Even if it seems right to you. Most of our people. We've been rejected and abused so long. When true love come to us. We don't even know how to receive it anymore. We look at it as, 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 as an affront. Oh, he's just trying to tell me what to do. Nobody's trying to tell you what to do. And even if we were, you ain't going to, you're not going to do it. The rebellious is not going to listen to anybody. Why are you rebellious? But it's just another clever excuse. You know what I'm saying? To justify your actions. Nobody's going to tell me what to do. I'm waiting on Yah. How are you waiting on Yah when Yah's already written it thousands of years ago what you should do? So it takes a thousand a year for you to hear from Yah? Hell, truth be told, Yah sent me right here to tell you, and you're still not listening. What do you want? Well, what you want is what you do, right? That's, that's what you really want. You just want him to sign off on your unrighteousness. That's what you really want. What you want him to do is say, well, with the exception of... 
Well, because of, well, it was the law. And I don't want to break no covenant. I don't want to break no law because Yah does not find favor in those who break covenants. And we're just reading through here all kind of ways where there are wicked covenants of heathens that, that we should have never obeyed or participated in. That their laws are wicked. And for you to, 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 to continue right now after all of this we have read so far. And you still don't be talking about you should be obeying heathen laws or listening to people who tell you to obey heathen laws. Then your own words are going to condemn you. Because Yah is revealing to you. If you thought that was right, now you know it isn't. And when Yah saw all this wickedness going on out here, just like he sees this wickedness happening right here in America and the rest of the those who are confederate, all these united, whatever they call themselves. If he's not just, he would have, if, if he's unjust, he'd have to let America go. And he's not unjust, he's just. Our, the, the, the things that are going here, I'm just giving you examples of it. The same thing, nothing has changed. Our people still compromising themselves, still in violation, still trying to justify evil by putting, I'm a, I got a good heart and I love everybody and, and surely I just want them to love me too. Well, y'all say you can do that all you want, my brother. You can do that all you want, my sister, but I'm not going to come. You're not going to be spared to fire. If you're in, in a, any kind of, if you're obeying any heathen covenant, you are not going to be spared to fire. Again, you tell me that Abiyah could not have taken this woman away from those men when they tried to burn her to death? Oh, that's what you're trying to say? Obviously, she had a good heart. Why didn't he spare her from the fire? Because it's an example to some of our sisters right now who are in rebellion and don't know it, but think that their good deeds is going to get them out. No, the good deeds are not going to do anything if you're not obedient. He doesn't care about the sacrifices. Sacrifice matter when we're in obedience. And only when we're in obedience. He said, first obey and then sacrifice. Do your good. And again, this is not to say that we cannot have been in error. Maybe some of you have been extortionists. Some of you been criminals, you know what I'm saying? Praise Yahuwah. Some of you may have been extortionist criminals. I know I just said that. Some of you may have aborted babies. Some of you may have been in, you know, homosexual relationships. Some of you may have intermarried with heathens, people not of your kind. All you have to do is repent and don't do it anymore. And repent means come out. Not just say I'm sorry. And do some, you know, penance. I'm going I'm to sacrifice myself for the next 10 years. And for the next 10 years, I'm not going to have a drop of alcohol. And so what? That's not going to get you in. If you're over there selling alcohol, you're just as guilty as those who drink it. If you, I'm not saying that alcohol is a sin, but my point is... That's not that. He's not. Abba Yah is not interested in your in your what they call it. Your I've got this 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 term that they use in in Catholicism, where these people they just punish themselves for years and years and years, and think that somehow or another because they did all this they 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 sacrificed themselves or their body for all these years that somehow or another Yah is going to see that as honorable. No, he's not. Not if you haven't obeyed his commandments. Not if you're in violation of his Torah. No. I'm telling you for your own sake, he isn't. And I'm giving it to you from the book and giving you examples in the book that whether you want to acknowledge him or not acknowledge him, that is totally up to you. But I'm giving it to you right out of our Torah, right out of our Tanakh. You don't have an excuse. You have a justification. Again, you don't have an excuse. You just have a justification. You don't have an excuse. You just have a self-righteous justification because you love what you're doing. 
And you have elevated yourself, like Satan, to the level of Abba Yah by saying, Abba Yah knows your heart, therefore you don't have to obey his commandments. Because you have justification for it. Because you made a commitment to a heathen, or a heathen laws. Because they said it was all right, you know, to, to, to abort your child. And you obeyed it. You pass that baby through the fire. I'm still here. Praise Yahuwah. Your brother is still here. And the message is, is, is what the message is. But again. When all these, these, these wicked covenants, and, and, and we're thinking that, that, the, in, in, that in these covenants, somehow there is redemption, the redeeming power. There isn't any redeeming power in wicked covenants. If you want to see the power of Abba Yah, you want to grow, and you want to be all that you can be in Abba Yah, then come out and separate yourself and make it a clear distinction that you're no longer under those covenants. That's what repentance looks like. I'm totally attached, detached. I'm no longer, I'm so unattached, you speaking, if, if you have in a full repentance, I'm so unattached to homosexuality, I've just gone and I've married me a woman, I'm a man, and I, or I just married me a, 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 a man and I'm a woman. Of my kind, I might add, to be clear. Of my bloodline as commanded. I mean that kind of separation. If I married a heathen, I am divorced. My last name is my father's last name again. If I was pro-choice, I am now, you know, pro-life. Crystal clear. And everybody knows it. If I was a, if I'm a, if I'm a thief, I'm no longer stealing. If I was sleeping with child, I'm willing to go to jail. <laughs> you know, that's where you need to be. But you still repent it. That's this is how that works. Y'all don't compromise with men. And Yah was so disgusted at the behavior that was going on in those cities, he sent two angels there to, 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 to judge him. Two. It's interesting. Two angels to bear witness against the wickedness. Not to just walk around and hang out and look, glaze over the hills. No, to bring to bear witness of this evil. These behaviors, just as he's been bringing witnesses right now in this last day. And if he judged them for the things they did, surely he's got to judge these nations today in 2023 for all the wickedness that we see that they're doing. I mean, they make Sodom and Gomorrah, the things that we're witnessing now, make Sodom and Gomorrah look like a, you know, a covenant. Not that there's anything clean about covenant. I mean, a convent, not covenant, a convent. You know what, what nuns are. But we know that's wickedness in there too, but I'm just saying. You have to judge this place, brothers and sisters. And that's why at the beginning of this lesson, I was sharing with everyone why we know we're at the end. If you go back to the, to the first lesson on, on this particular series from that study from Wednesday night, that's why we know he's about to judge this place. And if you're still in any of these things, this is why you need to get out. Why you still have a chance. Come from among them. Separate. Be a part of like-minded believers. That is why. This is why. There's no more time. I know many of you waiting around saying, when my kids go to, when my, my kids get up, get grown, and go to college and get a good, <laughs> according to the book with the signs of the time, that ain't happening. That's not going to happen. 
Somebody kids are going to be here when the, when the end come. Don't you realize that? When the flood came, were, 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 the, were the babies drowned? In Sodom and Gomorrah, when the fire came, were babies burned? What makes you think that somehow you, you, we are going to be the exception? We haven't said anything about all this other wickedness going on. Most of us are just as quiet, as I said earlier, as a church mouth peeing on cotton, not saying anything. Hell, many of us are attacking men and women like myself just for bringing out the truth. Not because we're doing something to you, just because we're speaking the truth, we're getting attacked. Violated. Just for speaking the truth. And I mean the truth thing that we're reading and teaching you from the book. That's what I mean by truth. Not our truth. The truth. We're getting attacked for it. Hated for it. There was a brother. I forgot your name, brother. I saw you in the message yesterday saying it's sad that this channel has so many views. But he said but to, to, that, that, that I should expect that because nobody wants to hear the truth. Now that's what he said, not me. He acknowledged that. They're not sharing your channel. They're not, YouTube is not uh, giving algorithm. People are not thumbing up whatever they got to do to push this channel because they, they either they're ashamed of the truth or they, they hate the truth. One or the other. Some of them are just ashamed. They're scared to tell anybody what they're listening to. So therefore, they, 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 they just, they do nothing. They listen and they go on. Or they get angry and then they, you know, they attack the channel. But that's why your views are so low is what the brother said. Brother, I appreciate you saying that. You know, again, I, it's not that it, it, it doesn't, you know, it didn't go unrealized by me. I realized that as well. I understand that. Uh, do I like it? No, I don't like it. I, I'd love all our people to repent and come back to Abba Yah. I, I would, I, I would if, if I could have my way, I would want all Israel to be saved. Every single Israelite to be saved. I don't care where you are on this earth if it was up to your brother. But I understand for that to happen that my brothers and sisters have to want the truth. And they would have to get out of their own rationalization, self-justification. And unfortunately, I can't change what Abba Yah said. Abba Yah said two-thirds were not going to make it in. And that means that they would be doing something that blocked their own pathway. And I think we've spoke about a lot of those things over these last three messages. And again, I think that's why Jasher was hid from us. Because it did not want us to see the intricate part, the detailed things, the things other than, you know, uh, the homosexual aspects of Sodom and Gomorrah. There were other things going on there. And you've heard, you know, marrying, intermarrying with the heathens, killing of children, sleeping with other men's wives, extorting people. All kind of things were going on over there. Killing babies. All kind of stuff was happening. But they didn't want us to know about that because that's what they're promoting right now on television. They're promoting all these, everything that the book speaks against. If you turn on television, most television programs, that is what's being promoted. Especially when it comes down to interracial marriages. You always notice an Israelite tied them to one of these heathens? Why aren't they showing or promoting you know, the Asian woman with, you know, with the European man. You, that doesn't seem strange to you, brothers and sisters, that that's not what they're promoting. They're promoting us in it. There's this those, those series called, that was on HBO, called The Last of Us. And, you know, there was this, 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 this inappropriate relationship between children, I might add, two girls. One of the girls is a star of the program. She's one of the main characters of the program. She turns out to be a lesbian. Oh, and you know who she was having her lesbian affair with? This, this, this Caucasian girl? Yeah, you guessed it. An Israelite girl. They couldn't find no other Caucasian girl to match her with. They had to get an a Israelite child and have her in an inappropriate relationship with a, with a daughter of Zion. Why? To encourage our daughters to behave that way. And you think this is this is a coincidence? We're less than what thirteen percent of the population. Our women are less than five percent of the population, and and they're almost what sixty percent, seventy percent of the population. You mean to tell me they couldn't find another heathen Caucasian girl 
to be in a relationship with another girl. They have to find an Israelite girl to do it. And you don't think that's conspiring against the people? That's not, you don't think that's conspiring against Abba Yah brothers and sisters? Of course it is. Of course it is. They know that when our daughters see that our daughter's gonna, gonna think it's okay that that lifestyle is approved, especially if you're not showing them in the book that it isn't. Abba Yah made man for woman and woman for man. Nothing else. And we're sitting on the sideline, most of us just expecting, you know, somehow nothing, something to happen and doing nothing. That's insane. That is insane. What's that, what's that old, the, the cliche, the definition of insanity? Doing the same old same thing over and over, expecting a different result? Doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result? Doing the same thing over and over, not changing, but somehow or another thing in, in your inability, in your unwillingness to change, somehow or another change is going to come. It isn't. If you don't repent and come out, it's going to be just that way. The way it is, however it is for you. And again, I'll say it. Nobody else will say it. I'll say it. And like your brother said, yeah, you won't get views. Well, even better than that, this channel will be cut off sooner than later. I know that. This is this is this is a last day warning for for some. This is the only warning some of our people are going to get. And it, they'll recall it in judgment. They'll recall y'all will put that day when you were sitting right here listening to your brother and you chose to not change anything. You'll see it again, but the next time you see it, it's going to be judgment attached to it. Right now, you hear it in grace. In other words, he's still showing you mercy, still giving you a chance to do something about it. There'll be another time you'll see the same interaction, but judgment will be attached to it. And there will be no grace. But you choose to go over there to the, to the, 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 the Maya flute person over there who's going to tell you that you can live that way. Or the camps over there who can tell you that you can somehow not be a Christian but still saying Jesus is your Savior and your Israelite. Foolishness. Let us go on. Praise God. And Yahuwah sent two angels that had come from Abraham's house to destroy Sodom, had came from Abraham's house to destroy Sodom and his cities. And the angels rose up from the door of Abraham's tent after they had eaten and drank. And they reached Sodom in the evening, and Lot was then standing in the gate of Sodom. And when he saw them, he arose to meet them, and he bowed down to the ground. And he pressed them greatly and brought them into his house, and he gave them food to eat. And they abode in his house, and they abode all night in his house. And the angel said unto Lot, Get up and go forth from this place. In other words, you need to come out. You're in a bad place. You're in the wrong relationship. Get out. Come out of it. Separate yourself from it. See, it's clear here. You can't stay in it and be saved. You can't stay in it and be redeemed. Otherwise, Lot would have been able to stay right there in his house when judgment came. But he had to leave. He had to come out from among it. Although he had been there for years and years and years, y'all still said he had to come out. And he's still saying that to many of our brothers and sisters, you have to come out if you plan to be spared the fire. Some are listening, many are not. Talking about to Yah and coming out. And some are sitting right over there saying, oh, oh, she loves me too much for me to leave. Oh, he loves me so much. Look, oh, he loves me. And Yah said, whatever you have constructed or con misconstrued about love is not love unless it's obedience. He loved those who are obedient. And the angel said to Lot, verse 48, Joshua 19, and the angel said to Lot, arise and go from this place. You and all that belong to you, lest you be consumed in the iniquity of this city. 
for you, for Yahuwah will destroy this place. And the angels laid hold upon the hand of Lot and upon the hand of his woman and upon the hand of his children and all belonging to them, to them, to him. And they brought him forth and set him without the city. They had to come out. If you're in these relationships or if you're practicing any of these behaviors, you have to come out of those behaviors. You cannot stay there and then claim that Yah is, is, is going to bring his mercy. His mercy is giving you a chance to come out when you hear the truth, when you hear the messengers. That is his mercy for you. That's the mercy right there. You're getting it. You're hearing it. And if it keeps coming back to you, that's the equivalent of them grabbing him and pulling him out. So he's perfectly clear what has to happen here. Because judgment is about to come. And many of our people right now are being given a warning, come out because judgment is about to come. And many of our people are saying, well, you know, I'm going to come up and I'm going to hold on to some of these things. And y'all say those things, the very things you're holding on to are the things that are going to get you destroyed. Do you realize a lot of the things you're holding on to is separating you from everything y'all has for you? I know some of you think, well, no, he, this is all he has. We know he has way more. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, y'all would not make your life become stagnant. No, that's, that's not the behavior of Abba Yah. And by the way, let me back up a little bit because I think I skipped here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because we need to go back. Back up a couple of verses. Praise Yah. This is right after those bees stung that woman to death. Verse 44, And Yahuwah was provoked at all of this and all the works of the city of Sodom. And they had an abundance of food and had tranquility amongst them. And they would not sustain the poor or the needy. And all the days their evil doings and sins became great before Yahuwah. Funny how the enemy tried to get me to miss that. Let me read that again. Verse 44, And Yahuwah was provoked at all of the works of the cities of Sodom. For they had an abundance of food. Now, does not sound like America. But when you start talking about helping the poor, you don't need to get a job. When you start talking about, you know, um, what it is, when you start talking in terms of speaking out against, you know, the evil. Oh, no, you know, it's the law. When unrighteousness happened, everybody, nobody, I don't have no opinion about it. They must have did something wrong. In other words, they were comfortable in this evil and they're comfortable in this wickedness. Or they seek to blame the Democrats or the Republicans or the white man or the black man or some man. Whatever it takes to be tranquil. Tranquil means you're comfortable in it. And that's what was going on inside of the people were comfortable in the wickedness. When we say reparations, we don't owe y'all nothing. I ain't had no slaves. Yeah, but you're benefiting from the from from the from the from the children, from the slaves of our grandparents. Surely you're willing to acknowledge that. How do you think this country became as rich as it became? Sure, not because your fathers and mothers were out in the cotton fields and the cane fields, and babies were putting out in the swamp to, to for gator bait. Wasn't your children? Surely, wasn't your grandparents out there? Where they were chopping off ears and burning at the stake and hanging for trees just to looking at one of y'all women. And one of our men would whistle at a woman. We saw that with Emmett Till. Boy, just whistle. Surely that didn't happen to your people. It happened to ours. And Ro Rosewood, some wicked little heathen, claimed that was, was, was cheating on her husband with, a, with another heathen. And when the heathen beat her behind because she put her hands on him, because they are very abusive. Y'all don't know that, Israelite, but them heathens beat their women like shit going through a goose. Excuse my language, but they do. Not all of them, but many of them. You don't know about it because they don't advertise. You saw that when the, uh, what's that, Dana White slapped the hell out of his wife on television? I mean, on that video, the UFC guy, president or whatever he is, they all look the other way. I ain't seen nothing. Oh, they abuse their women. Don't think they don't. They just put that on you. The black man, he's the one who, he's the one who violent to his woman. <laughs> Please. Trust me, brother. We don't have, we don't hold candles to, 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 to what they do. 
Hell, they burn theirs, slaughter theirs, chop them up, throw them in all wells, throw them in the water, all kind of foolishness they do to their women. The please. And our sisters over there, you know, they, you know, yeah, you know, I want me a white man. All right. You remember that sister, huh? Remember Lot's daughter. So instead of saying, remember Lot's wife, maybe you ought to say, remember Lot's daughter. Pelt it. Apart it. Remember Lot's daughter? Just keep that in mind. So now when we start hearing these folk talk all this silliness about, you know, Lot's wife turning back, just say, no, forget remember Lot's wife. How about remember Lot's daughter? What happened to his daughter for being in a covenant with the heathen? What happened to his daughter? Remember Lot's daughter. And everybody was okay with it. Even the ones who wasn't okay with it, they ain't say anything. Just like now. Again, you say reparation, we don't owe y'all nothing. When they, when they, you know, lock us up for things they would never lock their children. Everybody said, well, you know, if, if you do the crime, you want, you should be willing to do the time. But how is it that it only applies to us, Israel? When it applies to them, when it comes down to them, oh, he's too young. We can't destroy his life. Oh, she's just, she's just going through something. It's, 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 you know, she had three babies. And, you know, and when they have a baby, you know, they, you know, they're going to post, you know, uh, uh, you know, I don't know, post-pregnancy and, you know, and they just become depressed and they kill their child. We, we have to understand this. But a black mother leave her children for three days. They want to lock her up and throw the key away. I'm talking about an Israelite woman. But they're okay with these laws, these unjust laws. Because these laws benefit them to our demise. And the only time we get the benefit if we go along with them. And then that makes us heathens like them. Then Yah will judge us. And they know it. That's why they're okay with it. That's why they promote it. Use us as the face of homosexuality and sexual abuse and pedophiles and adulterers and rapists and con men, hood and gangsters, whores. And we can't hold a candlelight to their wickedness. But they don't put the light on their wickedness. They only shine the light on us. Cause you to hate your own self. And it's sad. Hate your own people. The ultimate betrayal when you turn to your own people for the heathen. But that when the people don't know who they are, then they're whoever you say they are. That's how that works, right? You know, we went from Negroes to Blacks to color to Africans to African Americans to Afro Americans to Americans. All in less than 100 years. That's a people that don't know who they are. And when your enemies have to t tell you who you are, you know you're in a sad state. But let me remind you, you're Israel. If you're in America, most likely the tribe of Judah. In the southern America, south and north, probably Judah. You came right out of Ghana, which used to be the kingdom of Judah, formerly known as the Slave Coast, right below Negro land, which was called today, or which is called today, Nigeria. Just so you know, that's who you are. You're an Israelite. You know, some of you can't stand that. Why, why I got to be Israelite? That makes me think I'm better than everybody else. Well, you were created to be the light of the world. To be an example for everybody else. But now you're ashamed of it. I wonder why. Hmm. I'm talking about those who think that way, brothers and sisters. Some of us, we are, we are. I'm so glad in my lifetime I learned who I am. I thought I was a little Negro boy, you know. Colored man, African American. And I lived long enough to find out that I'm an Israelite. Praise Yahuwah. I think that's a wonderful thing. Not only did I find out that I'm an Israelite, 
but I'm able to share with my brothers and sisters that you're Israel too, and Yah, and you are the blessed and the chosen of Abba Yah. Even if you don't want to hear it, but you are. You're beautiful before Abba Yah. You were created in his likeness, his image. And the enemy came in and planted his seed amongst our seed, the seed of the serpent, to corrupt us, to turn us away from Abba Yah, to hide our true identity from ourselves. But in these last days, Yah sent other angels, or men, to bring forth the truth, as he promised that he would. Knowledge would be increased. And now we're learning. And there's more to learn. But this is where it starts. Pray, I hope this is why you're here. And don't be afraid. Don't anybody make you ashamed to be an Israelite. To profess and confess it. But you also have to obey the covenants. Our, yeah, the just laws, not the heathen laws. There's an expectation comes along with the identification, brothers and sisters, is what your brother is saying. But I wanted to bring that out because there was this contentment in the land, just like it's contentment here. People saw the poor people. They saw people dying disproportionately from hunger and things. And when people said, well, we got to do somebody. Oh, we don't owe them nothing. Tell them to go get a job. And then they go get a job and can't even afford to pay their rent. How discouraging is that? You work 40 hours a week and you can't even pay your light bill at the end of the month. And that's many of our men and women. Why? Because the heathen are gluttons. They never can have enough. They, they take up everything and they leave the crumbs for us. And they tell us if the crumbs is not good enough for us, then we're just unworthy rats and roaches. It's y'all fault. But when it comes down to having access to wealth, they made sure they put laws in place. They're heathen laws to ensure that we couldn't get hold to it. Except for one or two so that they can hide their dastly deeds and say, no, look at him. He made it. But then we say, well, what about Jim? What about these Jim Crow laws? And what about these these uh, red, uh, these red, this redlining and these housing discrimination laws? And what about this, you know, these these FDA, F, FDA, uh, FDA laws? I'm, I'm sorry, these, these federal government loans that were given to soldiers who fought in World War II that was given to white soldiers. But black men who fought in the same wars down south was not allowed to have access to those same housing or same government loans. They don't want to talk about that. Look it up. You don't take my word for it. No, they play a big part in, 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 in the poverty in this country. The heathens. A major part of it. As a matter of fact, they're the ones who created the poverty. Because they're ravenous wolves that can never have enough dogs. And when you go to them and petition to them for fairness, they tell you, oh, no, get out of here. You know, you know, what did uh, Kamala Harris and Obama say? I'm not going to do nothing just for no Israelites. They do wickedness, but hold themselves not guilty. But then again, that's why Abu Yah says, come out from among them. They're never going to, they don't have that in them. They're flesh and blood. There's no soul there. We're flesh and spirit. The very spirit in Israel is the breath of life that Abba Yah breathed in him and made him a living soul. They came from the fallen ones. They're flesh and blood. They have no souls. Why do you think the book says a soul that's in it shall perish? Because that's talking to us. Judgment is already on them. This is all they're getting. When, they, when, they're, when they're finished here, they're finished. This is their rulership. The earth, as it is today. This is what they've done with it. Show you how righteous they are. They destroyed the place. 
polluted the air, polluted the food, polluted the land, extincted animals and humans. This is what they do in their power. And yet they brag and boast. But it's almost over, brothers and sisters. Why are you hanging on to them? Let them go. Move on. What did, what did uh, Ecclesiastes say? Why die before your time? <laughs> Why die with them? Praise Yah. Now we can skip back down to 48. And the angel said to Lot, Arise and go forth from this place, and all belong to you, lest you be consumed in the iniquity of the city. For your whole will destroy this place. And I'm saying it to you now, brothers and sisters. I don't know why y'all holding on to stuff out there, some of you. He's going to destroy it all. So look, don't, don't have nothing in your possession you are not willing to part with. If you're not willing to part with it, you ought to part with it just so you can be sure you can part with it. Because he's going to destroy it all. Your college fund, your housing fund, it doesn't matter. Your vacation funds, all of it. Use it for the good. Use it for seed. But holding on to it is a mistake. Because you're going to end up loving it. And it's going to become a god unto you. And it's going to distract you. And you're going to be placing your trust in your material gains instead of putting your trust in Abba Yah. The only thing that can save you in these last days. Don't put your trust in no religion, no New Testament doctrine made by men for men. Put your trust in Abba Yah and his Tanakh, his Torah. Learn from his apocryphal books the missing links that were hidden from you to keep us in darkness as we're sharing on the Bible studies, as you're sharing, as I'm sharing on this platform. Give yourself a chance is what I'm saying, my brothers and sisters. That's what I'm doing. I'm giving myself a chance. I'm fighting for my soul. And this is a part, this platform is a part of your brother fighting for his soul. Fight for your soul. Fight for your people. That's where your fight should be. Not for the heathen survival. They're not going to survive anyway. When Yah told those people he was burning down them angels, say, Yah about to rain down judgment on, on these cities, it's going to happen whether you want it to or not. You can pray till your, your knees get sore and your throat get hoarse. Yah judgment is absolute. If he say he's going to do it, it's going to be done. And no praying that's in man that's going to stop the last day's judgment. It's already written in the stones of heaven. It's going to happen. The question is where you're going to be. Are you going to still be in Sodom or will you have come out? Sodom is a, model, a metaphor for all the evil places on this flat earth. And the angel laid hold. I read this already, but I'm gonna read it again. And the angels laid, and the angels laid hold upon the hand of Lot and upon hand, on, upon the hand of his woman, and upon the hand of his children, and all that was belonging to him. And they brought him forth and set him without the city. And again, that's why we should be making preparations to get out of these cities, brothers and sisters. And they said to Lot, escape for your life. And he fled and all belonging to him. And then Yahuwah reigned upon Sodom and Gomorrah and all these cities brimstone and fire from Yahuwah out of heaven. He told him he was going to do it. The angel said he was going to do it and he did it. We're telling you brothers and sisters that we're at the end. He's about to do it again and he's going to do it. The question is, where are you going to be when it happens? Are you going to be like Lot and out of the city? Or are you going to be right there in the midst of them? Enjoying yourself, justifying it, rationalizing it. Are you going to do something about it? Because otherwise you're going to, the same thing that he is not a respectable person and he does not change. We just read that. Malachi 3 and 6. Numbers 23 and 19. 
If he said it, he's going to do it. And the book says he's going to do it. But there will be indicators and signs. He said, just like the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, just as it was in the days of Noah, just as it is right now in 2023, all over this earth, wherever you are, it's the same thing going on and you know it. Whether you're in the islands or, or what they call the continent, Africa or wherever you are, same thing going on and you know it. United Kingdom, it's the same thing going on. And you have to come out. And he overthrew, Yahuwah overthrew these cities and all the circle of Jordan and all the inhabitants of the city and all that which grew up in, upon the ground. And Adu, the woman, the wife of Lot, looked back to see the destruction of the cities for her compassion was moved on the account of her daughters who remained in Sodom for they did not go with her. And this is going to be the demise of many of our people because you're, you're, you're allowing people in your inner circuit, family members. To keep you back. And thinking that somehow or another. That Yah is going to have mercy on you. Because you don't want to separate from them. Well he knows that they're my children. Yah does not. Is not a respecter of person. Even your children. Your children are getting the same warning. As a matter of fact. You should have warned your children. And if they're adults. They're getting the same warning. You're getting. They're just ignoring it. Lot wife was told and instructed to come out. And she followed her husband out. But you know what she ended up? Instead of her staying with her husband, she decided to do her own thing. Well, I don't agree with leaving these kids behind. I think I need to go with, I don't, I'm not sure about this. I need to, I need to, I need some time to be tranquil. I need to think this out. I need to wait for Abba Yah to tell me what to do. Really? When you were told what to do already? Everybody else seems to know what to do, but you don't. How is that? So those are the questions behind the questions that some of our people need to ask themselves. Everybody else knows, but you don't know. How, how, everybody else has studied the book and obeying the book, but you over there doing your own thing. Talking about you waiting for this special voice that you're never going to hear, by the way. That bus has come. And that boss is gone. That voice is came. That voice has come. And that voice is going to leave. You are never going to hear that voice. Not the one you're looking for. He's already told you where it is. And he's used angels or prophets or messenger servants to warn you and remind you where it is. And all you have to do is go read it yourself and obey it. If you love Yah that much. Or as much as you say you do. That's all of us. It's not to one individual. This is to the collective, but yes, it's to the individual as well. Yah is no respecter of person. She looked back to see the destruction of the cities, for her compassion was moved upon the account of her daughters who remained in Sodom, for they did not want to go with her. And when she looked back, she became a pillar of salt, and it is yet in this place to this very day. This is for you out there who are sitting saying, I need more time. I'm waiting on Yah. I'm not sure about this. I don't believe this. Or I know it's true, but. You see that but? That's the but that's going to set your butt with an extra T on fire. Because Yah has already clearly stated that what we have to do to be spared the fire. And many of us, he's done everything to use his messengers to guide us to, out of this darkness, into his light, into his truth. And there's still some of us are fighting it. I'm talking about Israel, when I say some of us are still fighting it. I don't, I don't just, I don't agree with that. I, uh, that's, that's, those books are, they're, 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 they're not this or they're not that. Or, or brother, like the sister said, you, to, you gotta get a, a, a higher understanding. Seriously? <laughs> Respectfully, woman, where's your husband? Oh, I forgot. You don't have one. Because nobody wants to be with you because you're in rebellion. That's not to my, to my dear sisters who are single because you don't have a... I'm talking about to those who are over there in rebellion. Y'all know who I'm talking about. 
All this yak, 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 but you see no man. I wonder why. Then again, I don't wonder why. You're like a do. You're going to do what you want to do. Even if the man pulls you out, you still going to go back in. He said, no, you need to do this. Now nah, I don't have to do I do what I want to do. Okay. See what that's going to get you. Y'all said to come out. You decided you're going to stay in. Y'all say obey my word, you know, or, or except you be an abomination. You say that's just your opinion. Okay. Now I would say, remember Lot's wife. Yeah, earlier I said, remember Lot's daughter. But now I'm going to tell you, remember Lot's wife. And for you brothers out there, you Israelite men out there, look. <sighs> yeah, it's not going to spare you. If you don't come out, you don't, you don't get to ride this one out because you're a male. No, you have to be obedient as well, my brothers, respectfully. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just reminding you of what is true. If you think for one second you can just run amok out here and hooping and hollering and doing all this talking and being wickedness, you got another thing coming. You're going to burn with the rest of the heathens. You have to be obedient too. You have to be willing to learn to be taught, all of us. And not by people who are spending all their time, you know, being scoffers and, and skeptics and critics and who are trying to use the New Testament. They're trying to use the New Testament. They are trying to use the New Testament to discredit the Tanakh. Isn't that crazy? Oh, they ain't trying to do that, brother. You just don't understand what you read. No, you don't understand who wrote what you're reading. Men wrote what you're reading. Paul, didn't Paul write those letters? Men wrote what you're reading. Abba Yah was the writer, or at least the, the instructor of the things that we study and that we read and understand because his name is written all through it. Thus says Yahuwah. Thus says Yahuwah. Thus says Yahuwah. Yahuwah said. Yahuwah said. If my people who are called by my name, Yahuwah says, will humble themselves and seek my face, Yahuwah says, and turn from their wickedness, Yahuwah says, then will I hear them from heaven, Yahuwah says, and then I will forgive their sins, Yahuwah says, and then I will heal their land, Yahuwah says. Because Yahuwah said it. Not Paul, Mark, Matthew, Luke, John, James, or Timothy, or Peter. No, Yahuwah said it. And there's no man who has any authority to change the word of Abba Yah, Yahuwah. And if you're over there listening and following it, then go. Keep on doing it to your own. You, you did it, you own it. Yah has given you a chance to come out of that, but you're letting these sweet little voices, men and women, oh no, it's just love, and you know, no, I hate anybody who don't love Jesus. That's how they sound. Sorry for me sounding that way, brothers and sisters, but that's how they sound. You ain't my friend if you don't love Jesus. You damn right I'm not your friend, because I do not love a Jesus, or Yahushua, whatever name you want to give him. Do I acknowledge that he possibly existed as a messenger to the people? Yeah. There were many messengers. Joshua was a deliverer. Moses was a deliverer. Abraham delivered Lot out of the hands of Elam when they took him prisoner. He was the, the deliverer. There were a lot of deliverers. Moses was a, I mean, Noah was a deliverer. At least to his, to his sons and his son's daughter. He was a deliverer. There were a lot of deliverers. A lot of men who came and told Abba Yah's people the truth. Elijah was a deliverer when he had them wicked uh, Baal prophets destroyed. He was the deliverer, brought the people back to the truth. There are many deliverers. So no, I don't have to discredit Yahushua as far as his message. But his message was, you know, turn back to Abba Yah. <laughs> turn back to the Torah. Come out from among them. Remember the days of Noah as it was in the days of Noah. It shall be at the, at the, at the judgment of men. That's what he said. It would be just like it was in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah is what he said. At least that's what they said he said. 
He said it would be like the days of Noah in these last days. Is that not what he said? Matthew 24? Brother against brother? Mother against daughter? Earthquakes, tornadoes, storms, all kind of weather pattern phenomenons? Did he not say those things? Well, that's nothing different than what I'm saying. But he's not my savior. And he's not yours either, even though some of you think he is. He was a messenger. Nothing more, nothing less. Moses said it in Deuteronomy 18 and 18, a messenger or a prophet like unto myself. Even though you want to hear, you don't want to hear me, some of you will hear him. But if he was like unto Moses, that means he would have turned you back to the Torah. And if Yahushua was here, he was turning men and women back to the Torah. Not to himself. He was a man and they made him a god. And many of our people took the bait. And they're praying to him instead of praying to Abba Yah. Now that's the truth. Now brothers and sisters, that's where we stopped on the Bible study. <laughs> that's where we're going to stop right here. So what I would say to you in closing, you know, these books were hidden from, from us for a reason. You know, look at all the detail in Jasher. Look at all the things that, that, was, that was really going on in these evil cities that they never taught us in the book of Genesis. And they damn sure didn't teach us from the pulpit these things. Why? The question you should be asking is, why did they not teach you these things? Why were these things hidden from us? Extortion. Passing babies through the fire, which is pro-choice. Intermarrying, which is, which is an abomination before Abba Yah. Nakedness, again, an abomination before Abba Yah. Extorting the people, again, an abomination before Abba Yah. You know, uh, men land with men and women land with men, women are an abomination to Abba Yah. They didn't teach that. They're still not teaching that in the church. They're still not teaching it. You know why? Because of the faith-based initiative. The incentive called 501c in many cases that says that they can't and they won't because they're getting incentivized. They're getting paid to be quiet. Just like Balaam was paid to curse the people, or at least to have Yah curse the people. And then nothing has changed. Nothing new under the sun, as our book reminds us. Nothing. So if you love your soul, you love your Abba Yah, you love your people, you love his word, then come out. Obey it. Keep his law, statutes, and commandments. Teach others to do the same thing. Get rid of your scoffers. Put, be willing to die for the truth. How about that? Don't love your life more than you love Abba Yah's truth. Don't love money and those things. Use those things for, for the, for, for, to be a blessing. Don't be like the heathens in Sodom and Gomorrah who had wealth, riches, and then they let their people go without. Don't repeat that wickedness. Because that's what they teach in this lands of the heathens. The more money you have, the more important you are. But some say the more money you have, the more corrupted you can become. Nothing wrong with wealth. I'm not speaking against it. But how you use that wealth is what I'm talking about here. Do you use it for self-grandification or do you use it for the, for the betterment of Israel? The assisting of your brothers and sisters. That's what we're talking about here. But at the end of the day, we're at the end. We talked about section 230. It's coming. We talked about the violence against the messengers. That's coming. <laughs> but I'm, And all of us are going to be tested, tried to the fire, as they say. And some of us are going to pass and some going to fail. And I'm telling you, if you're compromised in any kind of way, brothers and sisters, if there's anything in your life that you're not willing to part from, you are compromised. And when the fire comes, you're going to be just like Lot's wife. You're not going to be able to let it go. Whatever it is you're compromising for. Whatever it is you're holding on to. For whatever reason you have justified it. Hers because of the love of her daughters. What is your reason? Who you loving like that?
And if you say nobody, then come out. Don't look back. Separate. Obey. Nothing more to add to this. I'll speak now back for myself. I love Abba Yah. And I'll say this, I'll end this lesson where it began. And you see, the idiot who would take and tell lies and, con and conflate truth and falsely accuse your brother, Yah will judge you for that. The, the, you know, the book says, hell is enlarged itself for Israel's, the, the Israelites, men and women who are in, you know, abomination and, and rebellion and liars and false accusers. That means you. Yeah, you. You know who I'm talking about, you. But anytime you can conflate and make a man who's just praying to be an abomination, you're, the, you're, you're a wicked beyond... That that you yeah you're extreme you're an extreme fool is what you are talking about to that individual and I say this to you out of love believe it or not you become so wise you became stupid you know what the book says the professor be wise and they became fools well that ain't what the book said but the Paul that they love so much told them that. And in Proverbs, it talked about there's this one who has to get too much knowledge, then you become an idiot. But to the rest of my brothers and sisters, stay the course, stay faithful, keep studying. You know, if you need like-minded men and women, then you can be a part of what we're, what Yah has given to us as not only a platform, but also in study. We only ask that you come with the right intention. You know, if, if, if you've got bitterness and you 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 know you feel that we're wrong, then, then don't come to the study. And obviously we know you're not going to, you know, help here. And that's okay. I'm not mad at you. Like I said before, I want to ask that you leave us alone. And we will leave you alone. You no, know, we won't be visiting you. You don't like what's on this channel? Start your channel. What's stopping you? I've been doing this for over now almost a decade. Go look. Oh, you're attacking the wrong one over here. I'm not your enemy. <laughs> your enemy is probably in your house with you, on your job, sleeping with you. Your enemy is probably who you're praying to. You just don't know any better. But it's not DFG. Again, my heart for Israel is nothing but love. But I'm not going to be quiet about wickedness. not going to happen. If I don't tell you, I get judged. If I keep my mouth shut, he judges me. And I'm not going to be judged for you. So I'm going to say it. And whatever you do with it, that's totally up to you. But you won't be able to say, he didn't warn me. God didn't love me. God, if you loved me, you would have sent a message. You would have sent angels to warn me so I could get out of Sodom what he has. Now what? DFG, thank you, brothers and sisters, for listening. <laughs> love you guys in, the, in as Israel. The two-thirds of you, better get it right while you still have time. For the one-third, stay strong. I'm praying for you. Keep praying for me. And until we, get, until we meet again, may Abba, you, Abba Yah bless you, keep you, watch over you, shine his light upon your countenance, and give you peace. DFG, talk to you later. Bye now.